In this episode of the 2016 Skyrim Modding Guide, we discuss the unofficial patches, stable Ugrids to load, one tweak, EMB boost, and I go on about a little rant about drivers and Windows 10 and DX9. But it won't go on for long, I promise. Hey guys, it's Cal from Dirty Weasel. Welcome back. Uh, we're actually going to be installing some mods, and uh, we have Mod Organizer up and ready to go. Well, not a lot of intro to these things, we're just going to get and start working. And uh, one of the first things we're going to do is, like we said, is the unofficial patches. Uh, let's go to the internet, we'll take a look. There's a couple things we want to talk about. The unofficial Skyrim Legendary Edition patch is what I'll be using for this install, and that's because I have all the DLC. If you don't already have the Legendary Edition with all the DLC, I would suggest getting it. Because at this point, why not? The other option, if you don't have all the DLC, is to go through the unofficial Skyrim patch. And that is, this is just the main file for the game itself, but you also need to have all the unofficial Dawnguard, Hearthfire, Dragborn, and High Resolution patches. We'll have to install the High Resolution patch separately, but... You know, at this point, just have the Skyrim Legendary Edition because that's what we're using. And a lot of people are just requiring that you have Legendary Edition anyways for most of the mods. So this is how we're going to be doing this. Let's go ahead and open this up. And it's fairly simple installation. Double click to install manual. Uh, in this file, you don't really need much. You're definitely not going to need the documents. Uh, some people recommend getting rid of the .bsl files. It's small, it's tiny, 99.9% .9 of users won't use it, but it is so small, let's leave it there. Click OK. Go ahead and activate it, and where you're going to put this is right underneath Dragonborn. And this is the load order, you know, you have the game, you can't even see, Dawn Guard, High Fire, Dragonborn. Then the Legendary Edition patch. Let me try and move some of this stuff over. It always resets on me. It's so annoying. Uh, rip. There we go. That's a little better. Over in your plugins, it will go ahead and show the unofficial Legendary patch. And now's a good time to talk about loot and letting loot handle things. It probably won't change anything, but we'll take a look. And let loot run. Now, it's not going to show much. It's going to show that. We're going to go ahead and sort plugins. And there we go. It didn't change anything. One of the things you'll notice about loot right now is that it was clean. There were no edits that need to be, you know, changed, no identical to masters, no undeleted references that need to be done. And that's because I already went through and used TES5 edit. Come on. Oh, that's right. TES5 edit to clean all my masters. If you want to learn how to do that properly, I suggest going ahead and going to Gopher's excellent video on using TES5 edit to clean your masters. So you have this, right? So everything is clean prior to installing all this stuff. So that's a good time to talk about it. And of course, there's something in my override. Yeah, I know, TS5 edit, because I opened it. Yes, I'll close it, because there's nothing there. All right, second thing we're going to be doing is the unofficial high-resolution patch, and it is over on the Nexus high-resolution patch, and basically it's going to fix all the stuff that Bethesda made in the high-resolution patch that they put out right after the game. So, easy stuff. We're going to start closing these down as we go, but, uh, you know, not much to talk about here. We'll just close that and go back to Mod Organizer. Same thing, high resolution patch, double click to install, manual. There's a difference on this is that they do not need the docs and we do not need the dummy ESP. If we were to install that, we would just have to go into our plugins and uncheck the box anyway because it's a dummy ESP. Looks good, install. Go ahead and click it and move it up there. Now it's overriding all that stuff, okay? So if you were to refresh all your mods, it would eventually show that it's being overwritten. So it'll catch up eventually. 
And one thing I forgot to mention is the problem with doing freeform like this. Sometimes you forget things. Regarding the unofficial high resolution patch, you can see we had to come back in. You need to come over to your archives tab, scroll down to the bottom, click unofficial high resolution patch. See, sometimes you forget stuff. You have to go back and edit later. So we can go to hide both of these, remove from view, remove from view. You know, it's kind of, we're going high speed here, guys. So just so you know what we're doing. Okay. Next up is the stable U grids to load by Altamore. Uh, basically, this is a stability patch. Even if you don't change your U grids to load, I would suggest having this. Okay. If you have a graphics card that is seven, like a NVIDIA 7 series or above, you can actually make good use of this. And I'll show you how to do that. You know, I'm running a GTX 980 Ti, six gigabyte. So it's actually kind of not being used to its full potential, but we'll get into that into EMB boost. So self stabilizer is the name of the file for you stable Ugers to load. Double click to install manual. And you'll see, see that data is not on the top level. Right click, say data directory. SKSE, that's looking good. Install it, activate it. This uh, edition, if you go back and look, edition one. So when you go into this, double click it, scroll over since my uh, thing's always weird. 1.0, done, close, All right? So now you're up to date. It, that's not gonna change, it hasn't changed in many, many years, so I wouldn't worry about that. now. Stable U grids to load. Like I said, if you have a 7 Series NVIDIA or a comparable AMD card, you can probably go ahead and safely change your U grids to load. And the way you do that is you come over here to your tools and you go to your configurator and you go to general. And you'll see I've already changed my U grids to load to 7 and my U exterior cell buffer to 64. All right. There's a calculation for that. We'll not really go into how you make that calculation, but uh, it's usually U grids to load plus one squared, and then I'll get you 64. So seven plus eight times squared is 64. You got that? U interior cell buffer, I can talk about that later. Um, there's not much to talk about. So we'll go ahead and close that, but that's how you change your U grids to load, and that will change it in the any file. So you don't have to worry about it. That's the easiest way to do it. So you don't have to go look for that stuff. So that's done. We'll go ahead and hide that from view as well. Now, we'll close that. That brings us to Boris Vronsov's uh, Crash to Desktop and Memory Patch EMB Boost. Something I want to show you on this is I don't want you to use this. Um, the reason for that is that the most latest version of the EMB local.any is September 2013, two years ago. So I don't want you to use the Nexus mod manager version. We're going to close that out. That's going to bring you to the step project ENB boot by Boris Fransov. And you can see I'll include a link in the description. And it's going to tell you step by step on how to install it. You're going to need to go and get the latest ENB binary. Open that up and you take a look, and it is actually 0 0.279, and it's a lot newer. And this is where I start getting into some really weird stuff. Follow the instructions, get the wrapper version, get the three files they talk about, uh, and copy it into your base directory. We'll take a look at that real fast. In my Skyrim shortcut, you can see I have my EMB series. And most importantly, what we'll be talking about is the EMB local.any. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up with Notepad. And you can see it right here. In the directions for EMB Boost, they will give you everything you need to know about configuring it. And I would go ahead and follow these directions for the most part. If you want detailed any configuration settings for ENB Boost, go click on that and it'll take you to a different guide. 
and then you go by section by section, it'll tell you everything about it. But you really don't need to know that. Now, when you come to the memory section, it's going to tell you reserve memory 512, and this is very important. Um, set this to the lowest value without experience stutter. And we're talking about um, in multiples of 64. Now, when we look at mine, I'm starting out with a multiple of 128. Now, I'm going to probably f play with this as we get more and more mods and try to get as smooth as possible graphics in the game, no stuttering and whatnot. And this is the funniest thing, is it says right here, this value should be set to the lowest possible value without experiencing stutter. See advanced guide for more information. This is the advanced guide that we're talking about up here. So, the more you use it, the more reserve memory is set, so you have less lag. But, the more memory you set this at, the more stutter you get. So, it's you have to find that fine middle ground. I'm going to start out, like I said, at 128. And that brings us to our, the next section. That's the video memory size megabyte integer and, and uh, megabytes. User should download and run Boris's VRAM test. I have that. And it says run the DX9, which is what Skyrim uses, and it's DX9. Go back to our desktop. I have it over here. I'm going to, you know, run just for example DX11, which is what Fallout 4 runs. So go ahead and run that test. And you'll see a message box up. I have 57,856. Okay, there you go. So I have tons, tons. You can think, oh my God, I can set this number right here, video memory size and megabytes to a huge number. I can't. If you run Windows 10 and you run an NVIDIA card and you use DX9, because NVIDIA, and this is the rant I'm talking about. This is where I get to be ranting about things. DX9, by running those three together, Windows 10, NVIDIA graphics card, and DX9 together, the drivers were never updated. So when you run the VRAM size test, 4,064. So I went from 57,000 to 4,000. Well, crap, monkey. Okay. Go and close that out. I... I, this is this is the rant I'm talking about. When you come back over to the instructions on the step guide, Windows 7 users can subtract 170 from the value provided in that using that value. Okay, if I were using Windows 7, I would still be at 57,000. I would have a huge number, but because I use Windows 10, Windows 10. I subtract one 350 from that 4,000 number to get what I put in there. So I'm limited because NVIDIA has not updated the drivers to run well with DX9. It's just stupid. So I have to set it, you know, because it's 4,064 minus 350, I have to set it at 3714. Okay. <sighs> Big sigh, so annoyed. But, you know, that's basically how you're going to do that. So when you edit your ENB local, just do it with Notepad++ and make the changes and save it when you're done. Okay? But the game runs fine. I will probably never hit that four set, that 3750 number or whatever it was, or 3714. I'll probably never hit it because we're going to try and optimize the game as much as we can. But that's it. Rant over. So, that, you know, there's nothing to do in Mod Organizer for that. And one of the things that, you know, the step guide talks about is the borderless Windows mode. You can get a lot of stability from your game by running Skyrim in a windowed mode. It prevents stutters. It actually works a lot better. So if you're open to open up Steam, let's just do that for fun. And you go to my library and you go to Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Go to your options. 
You can see I run it in windowed mode. Okay. Ignore this resolution. Just ignore it. You know, you won't have, if I were to unclick that and then go into my resolution, I would have 2560 by 1440. But we run in Windows mode. It drops it down. I'm going to say ignore that. And here's the reason why. Let's go ahead and exit that out. Exit that out. The next mod we're going to be installing is one tweak. Virusek, my uh, very good friend from Poland, developed one tweak as a borderless windowed mode mod. And it works extremely well. It works so much better than all the other options I've found. And, you know, being able to alt tab out and do all those things, it worked beautifully. And I can't recommend it enough. Matter of fact, I liked it so much, I created versions with Virus 6 approval for Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, or Fallout New Vegas, and put them on the Nexus. So, and these are my graphics. So, nice guy. He came up with a great tool, and I would suggest using it. So, you know, once again, download with the manager. I have it already. Go ahead and double click to install manual it. You'll see it's already set up. It is an SKSE plugin. So, you know, there's not going to be ESPs or anything like that. It works just beautifully well. Activate it. Now, I've already created, run this once already. So it already has the one tweak any. And whoop, I didn't. So I forgot I reinstalled it. I have to run it. So go ahead and close that. It will do the, you know, any file once you run it once. And we'll do that just for fun. All right. So I ran the game real fast. Open this up. You got the any files. And this is where it becomes very important and why we don't really care about the resolution on that. Virusek was so good at this is that he... You know, it shows window borderless mode, borderless window mode true. Okay. When you come down to rendering width, rendering height, okay, it's auto detects. And what it does is it auto detects the resolution of your screen. So when you run the game, it doesn't matter what the configuration says in the launcher, it's going to auto detect your screen and run the resolution that your screen is. Okay, easy, easy peasy. That's why I love this, this uh, mod. It's just awesome how it works. So that's it. I mean, all of these tutorials are gonna be very quick, very fast, and you know, include lots of references. So you can go look this stuff up on your own, but you'll see me do it. When we go over to plugins, you can see we the only thing we really had to worry about was the unofficial Skyrim patch. There were no other ESPs that we installed. And as far as one tweak goes in position, it's a SKSE plugin, just like stable Uger is to load. As long as it's below SKSE, I wouldn't worry about it. I keep all my SKSE plugins near the top just for cleaning sake. So, you know, as I get more and more mods, I scroll down and don't ever have to see them again because I don't change them a lot. So there's that. Uh, episode three will be starting to install things like um, UI mods, uh, race menu, and maybe an alternate start. I haven't decided. So we're trying to keep these things short, guys. So just so you know, that's that's the plan for these things is quick and dirty because it's Dirty Weasel, right? And my name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel. And I'm signing off.